Good afternoon viewers. Welcome to the PSOJ COVID Cast JA. This is a program that will air every Thursday at 4 p.m. for one hour. And this is where we'll be discussing pressing topics that are affecting our small and medium-sized enterprises. If you joined us last week, you would have heard the various tips that we gave to the SMEs, the kinds of conversations, the kinds of decision-making that needs to be happening at this time. Because guys, we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic. Today, we are joined by some bankers. We have encouraged SMEs to go in have the conversation with your bankers. The banks have come up with their relief packages. You're wondering, who do I go to? Are there any application forms? What do some of these relief packages actually mean? Some people saying, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go and talk to the bank. How can I have this conversation? So this afternoon, we are joined by several bankers. Um, Kevin, you are what? To my right right yes to my right i'm a little dyslexic with left and right <laughs> to my right we're joined by kevin foreman who is the sme country relationship specialist at jmmb bank um we are also joined by dr vinette notice dr vinette notice is assistant vice president of adjudication and training at first global bank to my left the lovely Casey Johnson Vaughan, Senior Manager, SME Professional Partnerships for North and Central Caribbean at Scotiabank. And we also have Tanya Allgrove, Assistant General Manager, SME Banking Corporate, Commercial and Consuming Banking Division at the National Commercial Bank. We are, will be joined online by Mark Gale, financial analyst, and an SME himself and CEO of TCP Things. So you may have been wondering if we were going to go with some heavy hitters for the banks. So we have senior managers from the banks. We have some of our major banks here for this discussion. You're joining us live. Please send in your questions. We're going to try and answer as many questions as possible. So let me start with you, Tanya because NCB was first out the block with relief package. Can you describe for us what your relief packages look like? Well, I think the first thing that I would touch on would be, you know, SME, the SME space is a very important one for us. And so we have actually come up with sort of two, two components of a package. We are looking at the fact that SMEs require support mm -hmm. and then they also require relief. And they may be related, but not necessarily not exactly the same thing. Okay. So we actually have chosen to increase. We had a pool of funds earmarked specifically for SMEs of three point four billion dollars, and we decided that we needed to up that significantly. We've upped it to twenty billion dollars. Now that funding is sort of specially geared towards supporting SMEs, not necessarily for debt relief but to, allow, to enable them to be able to, even in this difficult time, to sort of get through and achieve their objectives. Okay. So it assumes that an, an SME is still operating, has, has prospects for continued operations, mm -hmm. but need this additional support through this difficult time. Okay. Now, I must say as well that this is very attractive funding. It's at 6.5% secured, but we do have um, guaranteed programs to support those who have collateral constraints as well. So it's actually a fairly robust program. Um, that, that, that rate was, was slashed for, for the purposes of this particular assistance program. We have also obviously recognized that we have an existing pool of SMEs whose lives have changed overnight. They had a thriving business or a developing business that all of a sudden they got a big whack. And they are also going to be sometimes struggling to get through this, particularly this early period as we sort of try to figure out what the new landscape looks like. So what we've put in place for them as a sort of our standard feature is that we are in fact offering six month principal uh, moratoriums, i.e. if you have an existing facility with us and you're currently paying it down, we're going to say, okay, don't pay us any principal for the next six months, mm -hmm. just pay us interest to give you that little bit of debt relief, 
to allow you to sort of get back on an e um, on a, oh. on an even footing. No. So, so your your if your payment per month would be a, a, a less less per than month the current. because you're just paying on the interest part, not on the principal. Right. For six months. For six months. Now we put in a six month time frame because we really because of the uncertainty around this, we really felt that we needed to give a little bit more runway. We didn't think that three months was quite enough because even even if we're able to sort of deal with this in a very in a very aggressive manner locally, we are also in a global environment and we are impacted by things that are outside of us. So we said, look, let us at least none of us can have a, can forecast exactly how this will turn out. We said, let let's try and push it out to six months and then we'll have to see where we go from okay. there. But I would also say though that some people will not. Some people will not be able to benefit to the degree that we would hope from that. And in those cases, they may, may, may need to look at a broader restructuring type package. And of course, the point for that is that they really need to come in. They not need to come and speak with us. Um, the best thing to do is to really go through the branches that they do business with on a regular basis, mm -hmm. speak to the branch manager or the business banker or both. Those are the best persons on the ground to, to so to deal with them on a, as they come in. Obviously things they may have to have ongoing discussions, but they really do need to come in prepared and that's to have that conversation. Right. Okay. So let me jump now to BNS. Yes. So Casey, what what relief package are we seeing now from BNS? Right. So currently we have a customer assistance program. And for that program it entails all lending products whether it is a line of credit, credit card, or whether it is your know, term loan. What we are doing now is offering a three-month moratorium for existing customers who may have challenges. Hold on a second. Tanya had mentioned moratorium. Right. So, so what is a moratorium? Right, so I'm going to explain. So it's a three-month. So, so I'll give you an example. We have a customer right now. Let me take you how the process works. And the customer name company is John Brown Company. John Brown Company is having a little challenge right now, and so he needs assistance. John Brown will now take up the phone and he will call our contact center, which is 1884 Scotia, or he may call his business banker. Mm -hmm. Upon calling that business banker, that business banker will say to you, um, take his information, give him a form to fill out, and they'll walk him through the entire process. Now, what it means that for the first three months, he will not collect any interest or any money at all from the customer. Um, and then so no payment, no for, payment the for the first three months. months. If the customer is experiencing difficulty after the three months, then he will need to call back. We'll have another conversation and we'll move it to six months. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Um, similar to automate, what Tonya mentioned, we also have restructuring facility, but that's what we're offering at this moment. Um, and that is the process for Scotia Bank that you call. And in essence, as you know, the mm -hmm. situation is very fluid. So because it's extremely fluid and this is a first time experience, none of us in the banking sector or in the world have ever experienced something like this. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is doing it on a short term basis, assess the situation locally and globally, and then we decide for what's the best method all the way forward. But that's what we have at this time. Okay. So we're going to actually in further in the discussion talk about the application right. process and how does one even qualify. Okay. But I note that um Scotia Bank also has a women's entrepreneurship fund right. that was increased. That's, so prior to COVID nineteen we had just launched a Women in um, a, a fund for women in entrepreneurship. That fund is one billion dollars, and it's for working capital. Mm -hmm. So, I think you had asked a similar if a customer may recognize now that you know we're seeing so many businesses that may be booming. For example, if you have a supermarket or wholesale, they may need some additional um, funds. They can come into us. They can call their business banking officer, and we we'll work and give them work on that loan. Okay. And that the rate on that is nine point nine nine. Okay, so we've heard from NCB, we've heard from BNS, we've heard about increased pools of funds, moratoriums. Um, NCB will offer a six month moratorium on principal payments, but interest payments will be made at that time. And also a reduction in the interest rate. Reduction in reduced yes. interest rates. 6.5%. Well. That's on the, that particular pool of funds. Of but we've actually funds. also reduced. We've also reduced rates on other, on other, other facilities. Well. And we've also heard about the Women's Entrepreneurship Fund from BNS. But also, BNS is moratorium. There's no payment for right. a three-month period. So, Vinet, 
How are you? What's happening on the first global side? We are with our SMEs as well, and uh, we recognize that our SMEs, while the larger corporation, they are being impacted too, but usually it's the SMEs that would in feel the initial impact first. Yeah. And cash flow is key. And so we recognize in allowing our customers to retain and hold cash flow in their business to allow them to weather this period. We don't know how long it's going yes. to be. Our payment package, our relief package, allows our customer to hold back funds. And so we are offering up to six months more payment holiday and the moratorium. Mm -hmm. And again, six months as initially. So payment holiday and moratorium to different things. For us, it's different okay. because for the payment holiday, we'll allow you up to three months payment holiday where you pay nothing. Okay. Same. And Same. after three months, if, you know, as, as things evolve, as things change, and even in your own business, the way you were able to manage that period, we'll allow you another three months. And in this three month period, you pay only interest. So you have more cash flow in your hands, but not only that, we have allowed we are allowing payment holiday on credit cards. So the pay, the credit cards that are That's due, business credit cards. So for the business credit cards and for the personal credit cards, if you're an SME, if you're a sole proprietor with your personal credit card, you will also get payment. And let's go back there too, because while we are giving the payment relief package for SMEs, and our corporate clients are benefiting. Yes, we're here talking about SMEs, but our Owners and sole proprietors with their personal loads, they will also benefit from the payment okay. relief. They can get the payment holiday and the, the moratorium. On the credit card, there, the pay, there is payment holiday on for April, so there will be you, you are not required to pay your minimum, and you will not incur late fee. Oh, that's very good to hear. I, I'm sure Mark is listening very intently. We also have Kevin here from JMMB. So Kevin, we must say, sorry, we must add yeah, to please. while we're talking about allowing our SMEs to prosper and to do well in this period, we are also ramping up allowing our customers to get point of sales in their hands. Okay. And because of social distancing. So tell me about the point of sale. So this is getting the point of sale machine. The mobile, the, the mobile. Impulse, mm -hmm. um, we have the impulse which is on your phone and you have the regular point of feel and the wireless. So we are ramping up those opportunities for persons to reduce cash passing around okay. and you know, allowing persons. And we're also pushing forward, we're, we're encouraging, we're, we're pushing out our e-commerce where pers businesses can allow their customers to pay online. And that is something we are working through, which will do very well in this period. Yes. Okay. So Kevin, you have heard um, what your competitor banks are yes. doing. What, yes. what is GMMB doing in doing this time? So, as you mentioned, we came out last with our solutions but to the public. Not least? Not least, but we've been working on some goodies, I'd say. Okay. Um, so, so, we appreciate that our SMEs are probably some of the most vulnerable among mm -hmm. the different groups. You, uh, you have the retail clients and your corporate clients. Where SMEs might be hit hardest up front, given what's happening now. So, if you take a look at tourism, for example, that sector is almost decimated mm -hmm. immediately. So, what are, what are we offering? Similar to BNS Scotia and First Global, we're offering six month um, moratorium on principal payments for some clients, mm -hmm. which means that for six months you pay all your interest portion. Okay. Right. We're also offering a three month payment holiday, which means that for that three month period, you make no payments. Mm -hmm. You don't come out of pocket any at all. And this is subject to review after the three months because maybe three months down the line, you come back, the client may come back to us and say, but I need some more time. So at, at that point, we'll do a, a, a reassessment to see if we should extend another three months. So you could either get a moratorium for six months your, for six months on mm -hmm. your principal payment, right. or another option is to get a three month holiday. Total payment holiday. Total payment holiday. Okay. But, in, but in addition to that, so mm -hmm. SMEs are a little bit more nuanced than your retail clients okay. and so on. So some, some of our clients may have a number of facilities operating with us. So we, we have a menu of options that our frontline team has to work with. 
And we try to step back a bit when a client comes into us or when we proactively reach out to a client. Yes. And, and given a menu of solutions, identify what is best, what works best for this client given your specific situation. So for example, we could offer a line of credit, a non-revolving line of credit that takes care of your payments for the next 12 months. Mm. Meaning that that line of credit is used to service your regular loans for the next 12 months. It's, it's like a debt servicing facility. Okay. And, and a review is done after 12 after months. After 12 months. What so it, that would help you to pay the current debt? What it means effectively, mm -hmm. you're not coming out of pocket any at all. Okay. So that, I'd imagine, would work well for persons who are looking at a, <coughs> excuse me, are looking at a longer term, like in the tourism industry, mm -hmm. to come back on, on, on the fee. Yes. We, have, we could also issue a demand loan with the same principle for three years on the basis that your existing facilities are serviced via the proceeds of this loan. Again, relieving you of payments every month for the next for three the years. Next. Right. So, but these are In addition to that, I'm sorry. One more. <laughs> we, we are leveraging our resource center, which is managed by Shani. Where so that, that's what your what SME center is that? The SME Resource Center. Mm -hmm. It so how we how we've organized ourselves at JMB. In addition to the bank, where we give the regular um, um, solutions and so on, we realize that our SMEs they require some more handholding. So the SME Resource Center was conceptualized with the idea that for those clients who are not yet at that level or they're at a certain level, but they need to move to another level. This, in this resource center, we, we take them in, we give them um, business advice, we have business partners there, um, we give them advice and we move them to the next level. So we're holding their hands right, right throughout the process. Okay. So we're leveraging our resource center too, um, wherein we will be hosting some Zoom meetings starting next week mm -hmm. with our SME clients, where we're creating a community where say 20 or 30 clients can come in on a Zoom meeting, you're invited, you come on, and you share experiences. It's not us talking to you. It is you sharing your experiences, best practices, how you're managing this time. And we'll invite, of course, our internal subject matter experts from across the group to come and give advice and so on. Okay. So this is something for people to look forward to. And pretty much across the board, it appears that the banks have put some thought behind what the relief packages are. Right. So I know our viewers are watching and they're saying to themselves, Rochelle, me hear what I'm going to say, you know. <clears throat> but my business has closed. I had 10 employees. Mm -hmm. I have had to send them home. At this stage, I cannot figure out what next step to make. So they want to know things like, Casey, if I apply for one of these relief packages, are you going to hold it against me so I can get some points down now on my credit rating? How are you going to treat <laughs> with me when I come to you and I say, listen, look at it, I have zero revenue coming in. What is the conversation I need to, what do I need to equip myself with to come in to have that conversation? All right. So the first thing that you've mentioned, they would have been, I'm assuming it's an existing customer, an existing Scotiabank customer who is having some, like, some dis well, having difficulty. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're having difficulty, that's why we're here in this time to help you with this program. What we would say, call, you have, you, they would have probably known their business banking officer. If not, they would have known the branch manager and they would need to call and have a conversation. What we will do is actually, because it's such a unique, small business, such a unique space, it has to be done on a customer basis. Yes. So, it's, it's, so even though we have, we may have a broad brush policy, it has to be given the particular customer need. And at the time, we will sit and work it out with the customer. We have different, we have restructuring facility that we can look at if you, if the more, if what we're offering no, the moratorium program can't help you. But the best thing is that what we do, we can't say in that case, we'd have to listen to the customer, listen to the particular see how and work out a particular program for that customer. That's what, that's the approach we're that's taking. That. So it's a very individual customer by customer yes. conversation. But Kesa, when the when the viewers are watching, mm -hmm. they say, Kesa, mm -hmm. you sound like you know how does something your work. Right. How does the rest of your the the, 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 the front line staff? So tell me, mm -hmm. when I come to NCB mm -hmm. 
and I have um, I'm having no issues with my credit card. Mm -hmm. I am trying to pay my employees. Mm -hmm. I have I've been a relatively good customer. Mm -hmm. I've missed a few payments, right. but I've been a relatively How many good months? Good. <laughs> <laughs> and you come on and you said, listen, come in and speak to us. Right. No, they're not going to necessarily come and get to speak with you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Does your frontline staff understand what the packages look like? Have they been trained for these conversations? Yeah. So what I'm going to say is this. They know what the packages look like. I think what happens is that we are in an unprecedented time. Mm -hmm. So there may be a scenario where they can't give a solution right then and there. I think what is important is the conversation because they have a strong team of support people who are behind. Yes. who can give guidance and give, give that kind of support they need. Because as I said, this is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. As I said, we're trying to figure out what that runway looks like. None of us knows. Right. We're all sort of trying to you know, stick our finger in the wind and figure out how long this thing is going to last. Yeah. None of us know. So I think one of the important, I would add to it though, I think it's very important for anyone who's coming to have a very clear sense. Not, not just, I'm having, a tr I'm having trouble, my business is closed, what do I do? Mm -hmm. The business banker can't really tell you what to do in your business. I think that there's some things that you need to come armed with. The business banker will take what you're going to say to them and try to work through that information to come up with a solution that works for you. But you really need to come, and I think you had, you know, the, 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 um, the webcast last week would have covered a lot of these Obviously. things. There is information that the, this, the SME owner needs to come armed with. So for example, you know, obviously we all know SME owners, right? right. I mean, this is not, mm -hmm. it's not some, some arbitrary, you know, it's not some notional concept. No, in right. fact, we our all SMEs know are a serious engine of growth, growth. Correct. Right. and right. development but we right. all know, and employment. Right. But we also know them personally. Right. So yes. we know what our individual uh, colleagues are going right. through exactly. themselves. So, and they are all trying, one of what's, what is interesting for me is watching how they're trying to shift. So I have a particular area of expertise, and this is how I, this is how I utilize my expertise in this, you know, in forming this kind of business. What I'm finding is that they're starting to try to rethink how can I apply that expertise in a slightly different way. Okay. We want the obvious ones to be coaching, right? right? Yeah. You find a lot of people who are now coaching online and they're right. doing it that way right. instead exactly. because they can't do it face to face. Right. You're finding people who are, you know, you know, so even the matter are, of people who are people delivering. Are switching up their business and um so Kesa before you come back in I just want to, to jump to Vinet because Vinet is adjudication and training right so you both have said no when you come into the bank and i think across the board is going to be some similar conversations yes. Yes. Right. so you've come into the bank and when you are from an adjudication point of view what are you expecting your customer to come into the bank with that's what people want to understand am i supposed to walk with my financial statements for the last 12 months now last week viewers we talked about building what your story is so you can't just come with your too long hand what is the business that you are in are you producing your products and services locally are they being supplied locally are they being um, sent overseas where do you get your supplies from how many people do you actually Employ? Are you employing? Have you had to send your employees home? How long have you been in business? What is your revenue structure looking right, like right. before COVID? Right. What does your revenue structure look like post COVID? Right, right. So, those are some of the things that you have to come armed with. Yeah. So, when you come to a first global, Vinet has set out a set of policy rules for her frontline staff. Right. What conversation? is going to be had but more importantly what what do i need to bring in my little file jacket mm -hmm. for that conversation thanks for that question allow me to just go back to the first question you asked us as bankers when my customer comes in and asks for this package will it be held against me mm -hmm. will it affect my credit report this new normal that we are experiencing it's it's new we have never seen anything like this before mm -hmm. and we are riding the storm together no, you did not bring this on yourself. Granted, some decisions that the business that you may have made in the past that have made your cash flow tighter now. But mm -hmm. be that as it may, we are your bankers. We are here with you and for you. So, while we allow you to work through and work through these relief packages, 
we will not hold it against you. What is important is you honor the arrangements that we are going to ink. Right. So if we know that the business post-COVID, during COVID, my revenue is coming to this, mm -hmm. do not sign off on a payment plan that for $5 when $0 is coming in. Right. Let's call, let's put it all on the table. Let's talk real, and so we will set up based so on in other words, nuances. As an SME, when I come in, I have to tell you my business. Right. And that's but, why we said yeah, to you well, in the beginning, that's, that's, that's very important. That's very important. important. That's that's very important. important. Right. You don't want to share it. Right. Right. You, you can't be not willing to share information, but expect the world. No, you it's just like in a ready. Can I jump in? Yeah, hold on to one second, Mark. I'm almost ready for you. I want you to just hold that point. <laughs> so to answer your question, yeah. so we have prepared for our team a summary sheet mm -hmm. of what the relief package is. Right. And so we have said these are this is these are the high points. But there has to be the conversation with your business banker and your branch manager. So, so because all I'm coming, all the questions that you're asking and that you're, you're saying to our SMEs to come in with, we would have asked those questions and when we were given the initial sure. facility. Right. So we would have known your story right. to oh. a point. To right. But you right. will not have to come in and tell us, this is what is happening to my right. supply chain because right. my goods are coming out of China. So I'm not able to honor my obligations. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening to my receivables because the person, this hotel owes me all oh, this money. Right. And they can't pay me. Right. This is a list of payables that I have, which include my GPS. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and and so so you have to know come with that information. Tell us exactly what is happening. How your supply chain is broken. How your revenue chain is um, impaired. And then we you know have that conversation practically. What tenure should we be looking at? Okay. Is six months really realistic? Right. We as banks, we are starting with a maximum of six months, but we are very clear that we don't know what's ahead of us. Sorry, yes, and sorry. so for us, so it it's is a a monitoring and assessment. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So, yes. So, even, so just to um, expound a bit on what Vinet was saying, um, we have been having training with the staff because um, the training is focusing on the fact that this is unprecedented time. Mm -hmm. This is how we normally operate and, and look at underwriting alone, how we assess customers. But what is primary for us is listening to what the customer situation is. We have actually gone through examples and scenarios and having conversations and we have highlighted and like we would have said, given the package to outline what are the different criteria, etc. But what we also have been doing is having constant dialogue. So because what we have realized is that every day it's fluid, yes. something else ha comes up mm -hmm. and based on what, what what's happening, it, it, may, throws, it, off. it throws off. Okay. But what I can say for us, what we're doing critical because of all what we're seeing that we're having smaller numbers in branches, we are migrating all of our business customers to online banking platform. So what now we're doing, we actually have a very detailed and robust digital strategy to get all of our customers who are now um, to do transactions that they normally come into the branch to do, to do it to online. Do it. Okay, online. and we're going to and come our team, back to you right. with how that will work with actually accessing the relief packages. Sure. Right. I know Mark is bursting yes. with a question. Um, so Mark is actually the principal of a very interesting business. He's a financial analyst by training, and he is an SME operator of a business called TCP Things. He has had um, experience with the banks in the past, mm -hmm. as, as all of us have had. Mm -hmm. But what we want to focus the conversation on first, Mark, is based on what is currently happening and the, the conversations you are having with your other SME partners and what you are experiencing too as an SME, give us a kind of idea of what the environment feels like now for an SME and some of the issues that you're currently dealing with, and then we'll just get into the banking, but just this kind of set a platform. Sure, okay, so thank you, Rochelle. Um, yeah, so what I would say is generally speaking, you know, right now there's a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously SMEs, yeah, you know, they, they just they, they have no clue, you know, how to kind of like approach what's happening. You know, there are some um, SMEs I've spoken to that, you know, their businesses have been negatively impacted. Obviously, you know, they're, they're either, you know, heavily exposed to tourism, you know, or hospitality or some other service sector, you know, solar industry or whatever, and everyone is cutting back. And so they are faced with a very real possibility of, okay, how do I figure out how to, you know, um, sustain, you know, even some amount of the paycheck of my, my employees that you know don't you know have anything productive to do for the for the next you know four weeks or eight weeks and I have no revenue coming in right so there's 
you know, some aspect of that, you know, um, the, uh, some of the SMEs are dealing with that. But then another aspect is, you know, some are seeing, um, you know, major opportunities, right, where because of this crisis, um, there's been a shift in the marketplace. Yeah. And so it is creating opportunities, yes. right? And, you know, that opportunity is, you know, some of those opportunities for, for some of these SMEs, it is completely changing their business. And so, you know, yes, it, so, so why do financials today look a certain way? And, you know, the last couple of years has, you know, been X. No, in the last three weeks or four weeks, you know, it, the, their business is X plus two or two times X, right? And so, okay. it, so what they are facing, no, in other words, so what, what I'm saying is that, when you want to speak to the bank sometimes, obviously what, the only information that they're looking at is historical, right? And so if you're looking at primarily historical information um, and making a decision primarily based on historical information, then with, with, with discounting what is happening, significant discounting what is currently happening, it, it creates a, a significant gap that you know, SMEs can, it, it, that both the bankers and SMEs can, can of bridge, right? But what I really wanted to kind of um, mm -hmm. you know, touch on based on the discussion that I'm hearing. So first, let me just say that I'm, I'm pleased to hear um, you know, the, the, some of the packages and stuff that, that you know, all of the banks here have presented themselves. And you know, I know that some of the other entities in the, the, the COVID relief package that the PSO J sent up. One of the challenges that I, I am struggling with um, is you know, what, what everybody is saying is, you know, call call your business bank or come in and talk to us, mm -hmm. right? And to be honest, I, I'm going to push back on that and I'm going to push back on that a lot. Uh, you know, the, the truth is that as an SME, we have a lot on our plate. Right now, it is extremely unprecedented times. We are dealing with a lot. The last thing that we, um, you know, should be thinking about and worrying about is, am I going to be dealing with somebody that, you know, am I going to be calling A and then not getting through? You know, it's either just ringing. As a matter of fact, just today, I had a, an issue with with our bank that's not represented here um that i you know i i as doing some online banking wasn't working and so they told me to call their customer care i call the customer care and i can't get through right and it, i i i did i, I spent about like 30 minutes just trying to figure out how to even get in touch with these guys i don't know okay. so, so from like, what like, you're saying um because because um mark yes. i want to get into some of yes. these issues yes. but i think yes. it would be useful no, because we have yes. a I've, captive I've, right. bank yes. So just um a couple of things that have come up. One, that bankers have um looked at historical right. information. Right. I want I to want to to that. That. Right. But there are some businesses that it's it's a future prospect right. mm -hmm. and what are the opportunities for that? Right. But right. also um, I'm an SME now, I need to get my business up and I'm worrying about a lot of things. Right. What is the process going right. to be like? When you say I must call in, will I get through to somebody? Right. Right. And what was the third point, Mark? Because we're going to just go out no. the room to get some Right, so, so, so the point I was making with that second point, Rochelle, yeah. was, um, you know, it really, that the owner should not be put on me as an SME to get oh, okay. to the banker. The banker should be proactive. I should be reaching out to them because one of the That's what I wanted to get to as well. Yes. Right. Well, hold on, let me, let me, one of the points that I have, you know, in my perspective as an SME owner, and as I spoke to, you know, anywhere between, you know, 10 and 12 SMEs of the last couple of days preparing for this, and all of them told me the exact same thing. There is very little confidence that they will get support from their bank, right? And it's not because they don't think that there's money in the system. It's not because they don't think that you guys are designing the programs. It's because there's a huge disconnect between a, just basically two things like who do I speak to, you know, or the person I'm speaking to, there's a big disconnect between what is being told in the press and what I'm hearing from, you know, um, Jackie that I call and, and that I speak to, right? If I can even get through to Jackie, um, you know, and then so, so, so there, there's this huge disconnect. So what I'm saying is that it is really, really and truly the onus is on the back and just say, you know, all right. At the very least, let me look at my book of plans and be proactive. So let me just reorganize everything in my organization. This is uh, extraordinary times. Let's reshift everything. And every, all SMEs need to be reached out to by an informed person that can, you know, A, find out from them and be on top of them. You know, how are things going? You know, um, we, we know that things are bad. Well, you know, tell me what the real situation is. I, I promise you, I'm not trying to screw you and call you alone. What I want to know is figure out how I can help you through this. 
right? And just yes. be fast yes. and be yes. fast yes. and then yes. create custom yes. yes. solutions for all of the SMEs. Yes. Mark, so, so let me go. So let me go. So so I want to go. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, Mark. So you do have um, I want to some captive banks yes. here. Yes. 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 You have raised some. Um, I think you've put a lot of the SME on the table, issues yes. on the table. So we're actually just going to go around yeah. and yeah, have that conversation. Yeah. Yes. And SMEs that are viewing, please take yes. note of what is going on. Please yes. take note of the names of the persons oh, yes. that have given yes. the information. Yes. Yes. It has always been my dream to sit around a table with bankers <laughs> and have them dying to answer <laughs> questions. <laughs> So, Vinet, you yes, are <laughs> <laughs> one of the best customers, and, yes. and, I, and I'm there with you, Kevin. And because of Mark, 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 Mark. sorry, my bad, oh, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not touching social media, <laughs> uh, but Mark and Kevin, you know, I feel that pain and I understand what you're saying, and it is out of that concern that our CEO mandated us, Mariam, contact all your customers right okay so our bank business bankers or relationship managers they are hitting the ground social distancing with mm -hmm. their sanit hand sanitizer in hand mm -hmm. they are knocking up the customers we not they we are calling the customers mm -hmm. we are of course you start from the top and you work it down right all the business bankers they have right. their and we are reaching out to our customers right what is happening to you? Is this affecting you? What is it you need from me? What are the opportunities you are seeing coming right. out of this? What is your immediate need now? Okay, you need a payment relief. Okay, let, this is what I need you to do for me. One, two, three, four, five. Approved, right. of moving right to right. the next customer. Yes. So we have been reaching out to our customer. I'm so sorry that no one has called you. I said, Mark, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, 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 we are, so we're hearing from First Global right. that First right. Global has actually hit the ground right. with calling customers. Right. In fact, before we even had a COVID case, you were right because we recognize what was happening in the international space right, right. Mm -hmm. and from a supply chain perspective right remember we were having things can't come in or things piling up on the, you know things can't leave china because what was happening in china so even before we had our first case in jamaica as a bank we recognized that our okay. customers were going to be affected in terms of their supply chain and if they are, if they can't get their products what are they what going to sell, sell right? and okay. so from so, then we have so been we're hearing from to the customers. we're hearing from Vinet from for, I say Kesha is yes. dying to be yes. yes. I know I'm going to have to reach for yes. Kevin yes. and yes. for yes. Tanya yes. but guys what, when, as you're even answering the questions mm -hmm. note that a lot of these concerns are coming from people who are in the system yes. and they're saying me hear what you're saying, right. and mm -hmm. I'm probably so going to do the report to right. the board and say, right. Right. but nobody right. no call. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so, Rochelle, similarly to um, what Vinet said, we actually have been thinking about all the possible scenarios and ways how to really help SME. Okay. And so, one of the, so our program is multifaceted. So, we have the approach where you can call in, we have the option, we have another approach now where we have our business banking team and we have, we have some additional persons assigned where we are actually actively calling customers. Mm -hmm. but, so, what we're doing is because we have two approach we have the, the customer assistance program yes. and we have persons that sign up for online banking we're doing a, a dual call so we're doing the call to check in on how you're doing we're doing the call to say okay this is the program that we have you know um do you well ask them yes. how are they doing if they need the program and then we explain and offer the program to them mm -hmm. also we're able to can tell you if you're in if you're already on online banking if you're not then we actually have someone to assist you right there and then we have even gone further we have created a e inbox for customers who would like to enroll for online banking no mm -hmm. and that email that they can go to is bnsj dot businessbanking at scotia.com and that's where we'll also take any additional queries that customers customers may have and we have active persons looking in that box every day and we'll be responding to the customers needs yeah, we recognize that in this time especially with the whole issue of social distancing mm -hmm. we have to be proactive in calling the customers mm -hmm. so we are so in fact even before i came to this meeting we had a not a discussion with our team and we went through everything and say this is what this is the approach this is the strategy we're going to call all these customers but, but yeah. as you know we would we would have to look at certain types of customers so because you want to convert persons to online banking you have a strategy for that particular mm -hmm. focus then you also have the customers who may have existed 
existing lending facility with us that we're also calling. Okay. So we have aggressive. So program. you are doing, you have a pretty aggressive program for both digital and calling. Correct. I see a question Correct. here from um, Rory Walker. Yes. He says, I've been trying to reach my business banker, but he's no longer answering his phone. I'm sure none of them are here, but we're not going out anybody. Right. How are we going to, how are we dealing with the onslaught of all of these requests with the phone calls, etc.? Right. And is the frontline really prepared? I want Absolutely. to bring in the gentleman, called Kevin. Yes, I've been quite wrong. Yes. Um, so, 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 so to one of Mark's point, yes, banks ought to be reaching out to their clients at this time. In fact, at JMB, it was mandated that our SME relationship managers from over a month ago pro proactively reach out to your clients. Mm -hmm. So because we focus on relationship banking, it is expected that when a client calls in or calls their banker, they should reach out. Or if you're busy at that time, you get a call back. That, okay. that is just expected at JMB. So, so everybody knows that. You know your banker. You have is, a, but the bankers know that this is what is expected of them? As I said, it was, it was mandated. Okay. Right. So, um, so, so what we've done, we've gone one better maybe, even on the retail side. When we looked at our portfolio, we decided that we we're going to pre-select some clients for approval, wherein they do not have to go through any adjudication system Mm -hmm. to, be, to be selected for Are you us. hearing those things, Mark? And that's on I hear, I hear that later. Okay. Right. Um, on the S in the SME space, though, mm -hmm. I'll say this. Conversations are important. Yes. Because yes. To, yes. to truly understand how to solve your client's issues or problems, you need to have that the conversation. Yeah. You yeah. must have that conversation. It's no sense you're applying a three-month moratorium or six-month when it doesn't solve the client's issue. Mm -hmm. right. And understanding the client's issue comes from sitting down well, over the phone, maybe. Right. Having or that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let me pull in um, Tanya at this time. And Tanya, I'm seeing a question here where Jack, Jack Travis says, I run my business mixing my personal and business banking. We're talking about that off camera earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. How will I be treated as a mixed customer? Mm -hmm. For example, my credit card has business expenses and personal expenses mixed up, but I'd like to increase my limit overall. Um, one of the banks is also doing um, credit card limit increases. Yes, and, and that's a standard. Yeah. The thing about it is this, you know, I will share that that is not a practice that is considered best practice. Best practice. Right. Okay, it, for various reasons, it really can become very messy over time. Mm -hmm. So this is not about COVID. Right. As a general rule, I would suggest to that, to, to that person that they try to start transitioning to mm -hmm. make a clean yeah. break. But then when they are now living this as a reality, right. the fear they have now is, um, can I come in and actually have a conversation with like big big NCB. Can I come yes. in? Yes. Who will I get to talk so, so to? So here's so yeah. uh, so the way SMEs in particular are organized at NCB is that we really organize at the branch level, and there's a reason we do it that way. Okay. The reason we do it at the branch level is to try to ensure that SMEs can be dealt with at a community level. Mm -hmm. One of the things you don't want to do with an SME is have somebody in Trelawney being dealt with with some head office in Kingston. That's okay. not an effective way of, of, um, of meeting your customers' needs. So what you're going to find is that our branches are outfitted in a way where they, in fact, do know their customers. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, they do have a big pool of customers, so we do ask them to reach out. So they may, they may not be able to reach everybody in an efficient way because the truth of the matter is it's not as if it's a huge team of them just sitting down making calls. They're actually trying to they're trying to actually do that while they're also trying to sort of support other other requests. Yeah. Um, so but we in fact as well are, are embarking on us we just haven't been able to finalise it yet, but we are also creating um, a listing of persons who are going to pre qualify for some of the standard um, solutions right. okay. so that we don't know whether if they want something outside of that yes then they still have to come and have the conversation mm -hmm. but I want to address something that Mark had raised earlier yes. okay. that about yes. spending time dealing with the bank the reality is it's an investment at the end of the day I cannot know what your business does until you tell me so you really do have to invest the time in preparing that information 
to put me in a position where I can help you. I can't guess. So when he's speaking about the two different types, some of them who have their businesses are faltering in this time mm -hmm. versus the ones whose business is two times. And they're saying we're using historical information. One of the reasons we tend to rely heavily on historical information is because trying to get reasonably presented projections yes. is oftentimes very difficult. I've looked yes. at many projections over the years. True. And they're very, they're very widely in quality. You have to be able to put things on the table that we can reasonably assess and say that this makes sense. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, we are still, it still has to be professional in the way that it is presented, notwithstanding. What is going on? Okay, so Mark, you've actually heard uh, from all of the banks, and it sounds to me like they're making the calls. Um, anecdotally, on the ground, you may not be experiencing this or certainly the, some of the feedback you're getting, but it's still um, work in progress Absolutely. because it is yes. a very dynamic yes. situation. Yes. But when you hear this conversation, um, what is going through your head now? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Are you believing what is going on? Do you think that the banks will actually be there as your partner through this process? Yeah, so um, to be honest, I want to, but it, it's, it's, it's very difficult, honestly. It's very difficult because, you know, what I need is I need to see a clear escalation process or, you know, some process that I can action on my side that if once I run into, you know, Jackie that is having a bad day and she's a gatekeeper and for whatever reason, you know, I'm not making any progress with her, that I can escalate it you know, and get to somebody that can actually help me, it would give me a lot more confidence. A lot, a lot, a, one of the biggest things is that, you know, a lot of times, you, you know, you really actually don't know what's happening, right? So like you, you call the bank or you talk mm -hmm. to the bank, you know, you reach out to the bank me and, you know, you, you say, I, you know, they say, okay, send me your financials, send me, you know, um, I, so let me be clear, like, quite frankly, like, I'm a very, um, you know, I would say if I was a banker, I would want to have me as a as a customer, right? Just because you know that? I understand mm -hmm. I understand what you guys are looking for. I, I totally agree with what Tanya is saying. I, I didn't mean to imply that you know you know you must completely dismiss historicals. That's definitely it wasn't my implication mm -hmm. at all. It, it, what I was really you know kind of uh, the point I was getting at is um, the extent to which you weight the historicals versus the projections, and I totally understand you know it. Obviously, nobody ever gives you projections that don't look rosy, right? Like they always look um, absolutely rosy. Oh, is it beautiful? But, <laughs> but, but, but the question is just, you know, to what extent do you give um, benefit of the doubt and do you, you kind of, you know, put your money where your mouth is and, you know, work with the bank, work with the SMEs to say, okay, listen, because at the end of the day, listen, if you have to call a loan for, you know, your SME customers and they can't, on the loan and they have to shut down the business, right? Or they have to lay off employees. Mm -hmm. All those employees that have credit cards, you know, I, they are going to stop paying their credit card bills. Mm -hmm. And if they have mortgages right. and on mm -hmm. other loans, they're going to stop paying those yeah. things, right? That's and that's right. going to impact your, um, you know, expected credit losses also. So what you don't want to happen is that you do not want SMEs to, you know, be up against the ropes and, you know, not able to um, survive, you know, what's going to happen, right? And so, I, 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 so I, I'm, I'm optimistic, okay, yes, three months and six months sounds good. Honestly, I would say, you know, kind of getting in your mind, okay, real and true, we may have to be looking at 12 to 18 months, um, you know, and then, you know, just try to find reality. some way yes. to yes. communicate to the right. SMEs um, and inject that certain amount of confidence in them that, you know, that you are taking the onus on yourself to okay. say, yes. okay, it's not just about, the existing SMEs is one thing, and I'm happy to hear that, you know, you guys are aware of it. What I do know is I have heard from customers of almost every single bank represented here, and almost all of them have told me that they have not, they have not gotten um, contact from okay. you know, their bank. So for those so, persons, you know, Mark, I'm just going to jump in here, because those persons who are actually just joining the live and did not get introduced to the bankers that we have, we have Kevin Foreman, who is SME Country Relationship Specialist at JMMB Bank, Tanya Algrove, who is Assistant General Manager, SME Banking, Corporate Commercial and Consumer Banking Division at National Commercial Bank. So we have Kevin over here, we have Tanya, and then right beside me on my left, we have Kasia Johnson Vaughan, Senior Manager, SME Professional Partnerships for North and Central Caribbean 
at School Shabang. And to my right, we have Dr. Vinet Notis, Assistant Vice President, Adjudication and Training at First Global Bank. So we're hearing um, from our SME customers online, and they're saying, banks, we hear you. You're touting all of the wonderful things that you have in place, but we want to hear about some solutions. We're still not hearing specifically what are the solutions that you have in place for us. Um, what, when you are calling us, what are the questions you're asking when you're calling us? Kevin, I'm going to jump to you because you were bursting to answer Mark earlier along this line. So the customers, your customers are, are, are reaching out to say, we want to understand from a solution perspective, what are you helping us to, to do to solve our current issues? So, so the question is, what, what's, what's the current issue? Mm -hmm. For most persons, it's it's a it's an issue of cash flow and the uncertainty going forward. Yes. So, as we had alluded to earlier in in, in the conversations, um, we're providing cash flow solutions, but not only cash flow solutions. We're looking at it in a, in a holistic kind of setting where we have conversations so that we understand where you are now. We know where you were because you are, mm -hmm. you are a client, but we understand where you, where you are now. We understand to some degree because no one here right. is certain where we are going. That's just the exactly. reality. Yes. So we can probably patch a gap, for, 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 for want of a better term, for the next three to six months that ties it over. And we can do that via some financial solutions that we have, which includes your, your, your Payment holidays, you know, more moratorium on principal payments. We can um, grant a loan. We can restructure so, and so on. Does Those everybody things. qualify for these things? Not everyone will qualify. Not everyone will qualify. So, in determining who qualifies and who doesn't qualify, <clears throat> what is that process to determine? So, I'm going to give you an example. Say, for instance, I had a store mm -hmm. and I sold. Um, I sold dresses mm -hmm. in that store. Mm -hmm. um, my store has, I've had to close my store mm -hmm. because business has plummeted. Right. So I have closed my store. I have rent to pay in that mm -hmm. plaza. Mm -hmm. I have a car loan. Mm -hmm. I still have some bills outstanding to suppliers mm -hmm. because I actually thought by now people would be buying dresses. Mm -hmm. And in my store, I employed five people and I've had to send them home. Okay. I'm still trying to help them out mm -hmm. by paying them a portion of their salary mm -hmm. per month. Mm -hmm. Now, I have credit card outstanding. I, I know I should pay my taxes and um, the end of March has come and gone. I know there's an extension for the tax payment. Mm -hmm. I'm now trying to juggle to determine which of these bills do I pay which of my should i pay my mortgage or make it make it wait for three months for them to call me how am i supposed to deal with that help so so or, so just like to, just to follow up, yeah. mm -hmm. so in that so it, it's pretty simple were you operating at a certain level pre-covid right. okay is it that covid is a reason mm -hmm. right. yeah. why you're not able to pay your loans pay your credit cards right. and so on mm -hmm. and, your and, other bills. and your other bills and if we can confirm that, that your your reduced capacity is due to covid yes then we can have the conversation You're, you have a put in right there okay yes. Yes. so i'm gonna have to show you that um what i'm dealing with <clears throat> now is actually as a result of covid right. right now when you said that to me you remember i'm confused right now you know i'm mm -hmm. trying to just survive right now mm -hmm. How, how do I show this to you? What information do I need to bring to well, you? Well, for us at Scotiabank, what you say we need to do is to call us and explain that this your current business is that and we're, this is you're unable to pay the, the same example that you just outlined because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Once we have indicated that, because we would have already have your history right. and see how you're performing, automatically our office will have a conversation with you and then we will grant you so these are specific and it must make sense and it must make sense, it must make sense. Right. and and to take you it further show. it's not just the customer who is current because mm -hmm. also there may be that customer who is delinquent for other issues, issues. not related to right. covid right. Right. So, right. So, okay, so, okay because if i'm delinquent from before say i was I, i've been having a rough 
cash, right? right? For other for whatever reasons. reasons. But because of COVID, your cash flow is exasperated. Right. You, ju you just cannot continue. Mm -hmm. We are saying, let us stop. There is an opportunity to restructure. Right. And that restructuring may take the form of paying that interest for, you for a period, right. giving you some breathing space. So you will to help me. You. Yes. Yes, 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 we will. Which yes. is why we're stressing the importance of having the conversation. Yes. Because the truth be told is that every customer is unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Every because customer. it is unique, then it's based on your particular circumstances, then we will say, okay, we'll assist you. Our first option is never to say we're not going to help you. The first option is to listen and to see because we recognize we are in unprecedented time. Nobody would have predict predicted that we'd be in a situation, the world, mm -hmm. in like now. Nobody. Okay. So because it's the first time, all of us are working through this. It's a working situation. We are trying to say, okay, because we even ourselves personally are trying to adjust because I'm telling you, the work hours for us, have, it's extended mm -hmm. because we have to be constantly looking yes. at um, reviewing the policies, looking at where we're at right now. Okay, let's try to put this, having these meetings at seven, eight o'clock in the night because we are trying to so come the up with the best. Being very active and yes. proactive. So Mark, you're hearing what the banks are saying. What's going yeah. through your head now? What further questions? Um, what do you yeah, so think needs to be done additionally? Or do you think they're on the right track? So I, I think that they're, they're on the right track. It's, it's, they still are just too, like, you know, um, early in the process, right? In other words, so there's a lot more, I think, that can be done. So for example, I, well, what I think right off the bat, you know, again, I'm talking with, from the perspective of, okay, what would I want my dream SME banking experience to look mm -hmm. like, right? I'm going to this problem. I love for you know so two scenarios either i'm an existing customer which i've been addressing you know so far or i'm a new customer right regardless what i would like you know the bank to say to me is okay you are in this business this is what has you know this is what you say what you tell me is happening right and we're assuming that you know i have all my information together however based on my my discussions with other smes mm -hmm. or other companies um this is what they are doing have you thought about doing this or, you know what, let me look across my portfolio of companies mm -hmm. and see if there are any synergies that I can help, you know, uh, help, you know, bring some of your issues. So, for example, if you sell um, fabric, right, and another person, you know, um, you buys fabric, can I connect the two? And, and so all of a sudden, no, you know, um, you know, one customer can get, you know, a cheaper fabric and another customer can, can, can get revenue, right? So if expenses can go down on one side and revenue can go up on the other side. And that way, I preserve the integrity of the, my payments from both customers, right? And then, or like me as a bank, like, like you know, I, I know that I'm planning to make X amount of purchases this year, you know, in my marketing or in whatever. Right. Is there any way that I can redirect some of these purchases towards some of my SMEs? Right, so that I can, so that they can continue earning revenue because they are going to be adversely impacted, or they can take advantage of certain opportunities, so that they can service, you know, the, the credit facilities that I have extended to them. Right, and so what I'm saying is, don't just think of it as okay, you know, we we are a bank and this is our program, and you call us, right. and then we, you know, if, you know, when you speak to our, our client relationship officer, you mm -hmm. know, we will escalate it and whatever. This is a proactive. Are you all right, guys? This is, you know, I understand my book of business. I understand my 500 SMEs, my 1,000 SMEs. They are across this portfolio. There are certain patterns I'm seeing. Right. Um, this is how I can, you know, I can give you this facility for 12 months. I can right. give you this, and then I can connect it to other things. I have other companies in my network right. that, you know, you know, I may be, be, be um, you know, NCB, but then I know that JMB may have, you know, a book of clients that, you know, makes fabric for it, for example, and I have a whole for just makers. How can I reach out to JMB to, to, to put, you know, put some deal together okay. that they can, you know what I'm saying? What right. I'm saying is that, so you're looking and at solutions way. at more, at not just relief packages, right. but you want to also... Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's okay. Yeah. So, so, so hold on a second. And, um, and that goes back to the partnership mentality that I was talking about right. earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, so Matt, just to jump in to here, we are at 4.58 and our conversation is really getting quite lively. <laughs> um, as a case, is yes. inside of me here. So we're going to go on for another 15 minutes. So if you would stay with us for another 15 minutes, we also have some questions coming in. Mm -hmm. from customers mm -hmm. some very interesting questions that we would like to be able to deal with a few of them mm -hmm. but what mark has put on the table mark is putting that um 
as an SME, I don't just want to hear about a relief package. Right. I want to know that when I'm coming to you with a conversation, we're right. having a partnership conversation. Right. So you're having a broader discussion with me. Right. Now, is this exactly. something that, that the banks are saying, no, sir, I know that we're in the business for, or right. are you on track? Right. So, so I want, let me just address Mark's point. Um, so prior to COVID-19, that actually has been it's one of the money that we have at Scotia Bank is to is to drive partnerships with our different um, entities and also creating solutions for our customers. So let's say in the past we would have actually have days that our customers can come into our branch and share their products and sell with. Are products. you hearing that? We, no, we normally do with that, mm -hmm. right? We have situations where we have actually um we have these small groups like I don't even know about our Vision Achiever program where we actually take SMEs and we train them over a 17 week. In fact, it was due right now to train 25 SMEs and to, to walk them through. Um, so it's with Marcia Wunchoy from, from Action Coach. Okay. And how to walk them through in terms of guiding them. They need help. How do you structure yourself? How do you... Um, what your pro business processing, etc. So we have those programs which so so, so, so the partnership not, has always been at the core of our business. Of right. business. So what I can say now, what I have been challenged with is now I'm now reviewing and looking, discussing with um my head, which is Audrey Tobel Henry, to say, all right, what are some of the things that we can now do online? Because the social distancing, we can mm -hmm. no longer do the programs. So in fact, right now, similar, we're going to be rolling out some of those same initiatives. As you know, the PSOJ program is, we are one of the big sponsors supporting that. Yeah. And now that's why we're even here today. But the point is, the way how we normally do the partnerships now have to be reviewed. So we're in the process now to see, similarly, how we're going to have some of these webinars for our SMEs to walk them through steps guidelines um you know how do you deal with a situation like this we have been looking at those things mm -hmm. so we've been doing a lot we will see a lot more coming from us around that in terms of creating that sort of network we have okay. been looking at okay we said right, let me just let um kevin right. jump in for mm -hmm. a moment right. and because then and then vinet is also right. going to jump Russia, in before before let me i wanted to just quickly point to no, let me just i'm going to come right back all to right, you right, because right. we only have a little time sure. right. so kevin so, so, so when on, on this point of partnership. Partnership, yes. right. So Mark's point. And I agree. Um, and I guess our response, what I guess, our response to that, Mark, is that through our SME Resource Center, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be hosting on a weekly basis at least 30 of our SME clients via um, Zoom. Mm -hmm. And we'll be sharing experiences, um, creating synergies, just having discussions, sharing best practices. It could be that you're doing something in your business that could be done a, a different way. It could make you leaner, more efficient, because one of the things that we're gonna have to learn from this experience called COVID is that we'll need to become more lean, more efficient in our operations, and we'll have to learn from each other in the process. Okay. So in terms of that partnership, I, I understand, Mark, and I agree, that, and I agree, and we, as of, as of next week, JMB will have something. Okay. Like that. What about you? The, the partnership that we, as we seek to forge with our customers and between our customers, we do our annual FGB summit, um, SME summit, where we bring all the our SMEs together. And while we are talking with and to them, we allow them to talk to each other. And so we have the opportunities for networking. And in fact, our, we were in earnest planning our or SME Summit for 2020. And again, we'll have to relook to see how, to you see how we are going to execute. But, to the, but there is a captive audience, right, with um, opportunities, and we don't want to lose that opportunity. Okay. So we'll definitely be engaging our SMEs in that space. Okay. And I think it's important to understand that, you know, this is not a, it's not a new thing. I think what mm -hmm. happens though is that it tends not to capture the entire pool because there is a very large number of SMEs. Mm -hmm. So again, in a similar way, we have also done those types of things where we, we've actually not only done, you know, one day sessions and shorter sessions we've actually done long-term training programs with our SMEs with select SMEs now they do have to you know you, you're gonna you know different qualification criteria because there, there are limited numbers but we've trained our SMEs over extended periods of time teaching them you know how to better manage their business teaching them how to so understand and that will not be central. extended so, into this time so what happens is that we were we were also in the process of literally just in the process of planning so, it and have had to sort of halt, we'll come again, because we're going to have, now some things, 
some things do work better with interaction. interaction. Yes. Um, right. So what we've done is that we've sort of looked at the programs and said, okay, which ones do we think right. we can actually execute now through webinars and you know in larger forums and also in smaller forums, which is okay. more more individualized. But the truth of the matter is that you know there's some elements of these programs that we just yeah. have to say, look, because we're still wait. going to be. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, the pool of SMEs is a is a pretty large, large pool one. of yes. SMEs. Yes. But I think what I'm hearing from SMEs is that we want as SMEs. We want that what, when we're coming in to have the conversation, it's not a hands-off conversation. Mm, right. This is a partnership and a collaboration conversation. So don't just put out a re relief package. Right. Right. So I have some questions sure, here. But I must sure. add here, but the opportunity also for receivables financing. That, that's a right opportunity now. Okay. Especially for our customers and SMEs that yeah. are bringing in the medical um, yes. stuff, okay. like the, the supplies. So receivables and financing. And so yes. where our SMEs have a contract mm -hmm. from an entity that we know can pay Be during this period. period. Right. right. So wherever that so there are product solutions that may not, in fact, be mentioned in the COVID relief Correct. that are still available. That is what the and conversation. That's why you that's a big conversation. So we are going to say to you bring in that that right. power, uh, what do you call purchase order, right. or contract right. that you have. Right. We will finance a percentage. Or because of what is happening with COVID, we will have a look at it to see how much of this we can finance, advance you the money, so that you can purchase those supplies to bring them to in, bring them to yes. supply whoever needs it, and then assign those contract proceeds. You know, Russia, to okay. one of the things that we can say, COVID really has... It has caused a lot of us to put some things on pause and focus on what is a priority right now. Mm -hmm. So not that um, partnership, like for example, is one that is very important, hence my role at Scotia. We're focused on how we're going to build partnerships. And that was what we were working on. And then with COVID-19, we had to pause some of those plans. So that then we, now you have to get to put it in real action. There you go. So what is happening <laughs> now is that some of the things, so some of them, <laughs> we have to know, is a test run. So it's not a test run. This is not a test run. This is the real thing. No, Correct. Okay. So what is happening now, some of the things we have to be looking at, how they were going to be delivered, can't be delivered in the same format. Right. And the thing is that some things would have worked more effective face to face, and there are some things that we have to say, okay, we can't do it in that way. Let's see how we're going to use online to, to reach it. our customers. Okay. As, as you mentioned that, we have an interesting question here. Um, I had a situation this week where the bank held on to funds because a client paid by check. In this day and age, yes, they should pay online, but some don't. Does the bank really have to hold on to a check for days on end during this time? Um, to make matters worse, I, will to I was told after that it may take longer to clear now because of the limited banking hours. So I, um, I think this is an interesting question because as we're even having these yes. discussions and we're talking about COVID relief, our customers, our SMEs are saying, but in at this time, the, the, the people now that are paying me, and then go pay me by check, and you hold on to the check so it's that I can meet. Well, it's about recourse. It's, yes, yes, but you know yes. what is interesting? Um, we don't want to get into um, yes. 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 but there are right. some fees that mm -hmm. we have waiver on. Yes, okay. for okay. RTGS. Yes, yes, yes. So and RTGS, what at? So normally that's how you transfer from person, person to person. person, to person. person right. and, the, yes. and the no, but you remember too that yes, we, we have an audience. That yes, is abroad or yes, yes, so, so, yes, so yes. you're speaking electronic transfer. Electronic, electronic transfer. Electronic. So those are the real time right. electronic transfer. Because right. okay. you need to be moving away from checks. Yes. yes. But what yes. Yes. during this period? Yes. Right. We're gonna have where some of the persons that are paying us, mm -hmm. um, we say to them, do a transfer for me now, mm -hmm. and they say, me not the transfer. And you're not going to say, why do you figure out how to do a transfer? You're gonna say, give me the check. And you take the check and you give it to the bank, but you remember now you're not earning any revenue, so you're actually depending on this money clearing. And I think what your customers are asking is in looking at this holistically, and as the banks are collaborating with their customers, and I'm sure having discussions with each other mm -hmm. and with the central bank, are there any things that can be done to help to have checks cleared faster? Your customers want to know. What? Because if I get a check right and all, mm -hmm. I not only say you need to go it set up. Right. That's, 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 that's not a COVID issue. That's not a COVID issue. That's not a COVID issue. Right. That's a, that's yeah, a, but, but it's an issue that exacts. Because it needs to be paid. We have to commercialize this. 
The, mm-hmm. you know, we've been trying to to encourage people to clients to, to not use checks. Yes. Checks are checks are a very messy way of doing business for for, for a variety of reasons. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm not going to get into all of those reasons here. But I think you know we didn't just put in electronic transfers. We've had those available for a very long time. We've been trying to encourage clients. Now you know I've I've certainly so, had to drag certain people kicking and screaming to say mm-hmm. no, we're not going to pay you by check. We're going to pay you by transfer. Give me your you yeah. give me your. So so we have a situation now though where um we do have persons more persons going online and they're forced to over this period right Right. but um i think it is something just bearing in mind that your customers are asking the question and we're saying we can't talk about it and let us talk so that's right come let's let's talk about let's talk about it let us know which is why and it has to be case by case it is case by case yes yes no um a lot of of, of the viewers are asking this question because mm-hmm. of course people hear the conversation and what the different banks are offering right. and they're saying okay um, if I am not currently your customer mm-hmm. is it that the conversation is only with your existing customers or can I come in and become a customer of yours and benefit from COVID relief packages mm-hmm. so if you so so it depends yes. on sort of how you're free right. Right. the truth so, of the matter mm-hmm. is that we encourage people who want to borrow to come to us. At the end of the day though, remember that you have to qualify. I mean, mm-hmm. you yes. must be able to present something to me which says, this makes sense. It can't be that you're gonna say that- So you are encouraging non customers, Absolutely. persons yes. who are not currently your customer, right. to come in, but you're saying it won't necessarily be that we're still going to have to hear this story with the assessment. So, so what's so the so 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 different process? If, if, right. if, if you have a loan with Bank X, X. and I'm Bank A, mm-hmm. and you your business has all of a sudden slowed down, I expect you to be dealing with your the bank, not with me, Correct. in that particular scenario, meaning Correct. that you're talking about a relief program where you you're where you're looking for assistance for your business because it's closed down that's not a good in, that, that's not where you where okay. you expect yes. so, so what I add though, yeah because I kept the words you are clarifying you said that it's two different conversations not every SME yes. has a, a borrowing relationship with any different bank banks account. right so, so I could be at an SME who would have been operating from my own resources from cash mm-hmm. and, right. and doing pretty well right and know that COVID has hit Mm-hmm. I am unable to operate in the same manner I used to before. I know I need some help. Okay. The question is, would our package be applicable to someone like you? We're saying yes. Because if you can prove that prior to COVID, you, you were operating operations. at a particular level, level, and the reason you're not able to operate at that level again is because of COVID, we can have a conversation, we can work out a plan because our loans are paid by future cash flows. Mm-hmm. If we can determine that, if we tie you over for the next six months, mm-hmm. all things being equal, you should be back in a position to make your loan payments and operating as you used to, we can have the conversation. So I think what I'm trying to very specifically say is yes. this. If in fact you have borrowings ex- elsewhere, that's really mm-hmm. what I was referring to. If right. you have borrowings e- elsewhere and all of a sudden you find that you can't pay your loans, I expect you to be having your conversation with, with your the bank that you have your borrowings with. Right. So, so, but so Kevin's so we're, scenario we're is a little bit different. Yes, it is. Yes. Right. Kevin's scenario is a little bit different where, where you were saying that you are not an existing borrower at all. Right. You are an SME customer who is a non-borrowing client right across the board. Mm-hmm. That is a different conversation. No, and let me tell you, as bankers too, because you remember you're having you, you, you need to be having that wider conversation. Right. And as mm-hmm. Mark mentioned, there are going to be some persons mm-hmm. who their business was not certainly did not blow up as much as with COVID. Mm-hmm. Because it's a business that will thrive during right. COVID. Right. And what they want to know is I was not a customer before. Right. Um, because I think people may have in their mind that things have just um, contracted and you can't go to the bank now to Bank-tastic. steal. Banks are saving the And so there is COVID relief, right? But banks are still open for business. So let me remind you what I started with. Mm-hmm. We had a $3.4 billion pool that we've now increased to $20 billion. Yes. That NCB is. has $20 billion of specially geared SME funding to lend. 
Okay. Right. So, Mark, we have about two minutes left, and I'm giving you 30 seconds out of that two minutes. <laughs> Tell me, you have heard the various discussions. Some of your questions have been answered. What would your wrap-up thoughts be? Right. So, uh, what I will challenge all the bankers is uh, two things. One is that you know when an SME comes to you and you know, for example, applies for a particular credit line, mm -hmm. and you determine that okay, you know, for whatever reason, their financial, their historical sort of can't um, service the, you know that particular line. Don't just say okay, no, you're declined and that's it. Say okay, well, okay, you can't qualify for that, but here what you can qualify for this, right? Or here's another you know kind of way to look at that problem. Here's another solution to help you with this particular problem. It may not be exactly what you wanted, but here's something that can help you, right? So that's point one. Because I, I'm just thinking too, like in America, for example, if you apply for, apply for a $100,000 credit line and you can only qualify for 42, they're going to give you an automatic approval for a $42,000 credit line. Whereas in Jamaica, if you apply a $100,000 credit line and, you, and you, you, know, you, you don't qualify, they just say, you know, that's it. And then, you know, you, you don't even know that you could, you could qualify for 42, right? So, so that's one point. And the second point is, what I want, you know, um, my banker to call me mm -hmm. is call and say, Mark, listen, I know that this is what you do. I have more money for you. I have new revenue opportunities for you. I have other customers that would love to buy your products. I have, you know, new ways for you to grow your business. That is what every SME wants to get a call from their banker. Every single one. Okay. So, and any of those bankers here that can do that, they will have SMEs lining out the door to, to become one of their customers. Okay, so we've heard the challenge from our SME that's on the call. I'm just going to go quickly, everybody, with 20 seconds. What is your wrap-up that you are saying to your customers? So, for our clients... Um, you want to just remind them where you're from, Kevin? From JMB. Let's have a discussion. Um, allow us to understand your business better. Because we have, we have an idea of what your business looks like. But let's have a discussion. Let's look at it from a holistic perspective perspective where it's not only just some cash flow support but how we can make you into a better SME where you can move from where you are now to where you believe or where you ought to be let's work out that plan and that is irrespective of if it's during COVID or in good times so let's have the conversation that's okay. where it starts. All right. Vinet. I'm um, in directly response. Where are you from again, Vinet? I'm from First Global. Global. Customers, yes. I'm from First Global. And what I say to Kevin and all Mark yes. and all of the other SMEs that are listening, and I hear, hear you loud and clear, what we are saying, we are sharpening our tools. We are, we are bursting. We are there. We are hitting the roads with our customers. We are saying to our SMEs, you sharpen your tools as well. When you say to me, FGB, tell them about my revenue stream. I want you to be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to hold your part of the bargain because it's a two-way relationship. It's a partnership. So as you sharpen your tools, we are sharpening our tools and we are here to serve and to see. You see, as Jamaicans, we can beat this, you know. We can beat this and we don't know how the end of the road, how it looks, <laughs> but we will be better for this. We will be stronger, we'll be resilient, and we'll come up with some new things that we didn't know we had in us. And okay. the bank at FGB is here to stand and finance that. Right. Okay, All right, so I'm Casey from Scotia Bank. And I just wanted to just tell the SMEs that we are here to be your partner, we're here for you. Our goal right now is to, 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 to speak to you on an individual basis, hear what your needs are, find the best solutions for you. Our goal is that we can't say we're going to change everything overnight, but mm -hmm. we are working through it as a process. And um, in fact, we want and want them to know that Scotia is here to help you. If you want to reach out to us, you have, my name is Casey Johnson Vaughan. So you can send me an email at scotiabank at K-A-Y-S-I-A dot Johnson hyphen Vaughan. And the Vaughan is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N at scotiabank.com. Mm -hmm. And we, um, whatever suggestions or recommendations, we'll take the feedback because our goal is to listen to our customers, look at what they're saying, and see if we can find products or solutions to help them. Mm -hmm. And we want you to know that Scotiabank is here as your partner. Okay. Tanya. Okay. Um, so Which bank? Remind your customers. I'm from, from National Commercial Bank. And one of the things what I really would like to say to our customers would be a couple of things. I think the first thing I want to do is to make sure, to, to just to underscore that NCB has been a pioneer in this market. We are a bank of nation builders. We have a history of it. We have a pool of SME customers who have been with us for many, many years. 
because they've stuck with us because we have stuck with them. The reality is that this is a very difficult time, but it's going to be a time where some are going to be hurt, hopefully to come out better on the other end. Others are going to thrive throughout, hopefully to grow thereafter. And we are here to help you regardless of where you are in that process. At the end of the day, this is a win-win. The nation needs SMEs. Yes. Yes. And we are built on SMEs. Yes. SMEs, we rely on SMEs for the, for the continued, um, for the continued the growth, growth of, this the of this country. And we all really need SMEs to thrive. Mm -hmm. So we understand our role in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have heard from the bankers, um, SMEs. Last week we talked about the tips. This week we're hearing the conversations to be had with the banks. The banks have said we are open to the conversations. We want to have the conversations. Another click, um, area that has come up of concern is how do I deal with my employees at this time? How do I manage my workforce? What legislation do I have to bear in mind? What is laying off? Can I just lay off people? How do I manage to get through this time with my employees? And next week, join us for a discussion on managing the labor force during COVID. We're going to have some interesting panelists to answer several of your questions and to come and give you a presentation and tips on how to manage your workforce during COVID. We are pleased to have had you join us this week and we're asking you to join us every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Facebook Live right at this page. We're asking you to comment, to share, to send in your questions, but also follow the PSOJ website because we'll be continuously up, up um, improving the information that's available we'll be updating the information coming out from the banks and we're hearing your questions and seeking to have them addressed on this program so join us again next week i'd like to just thank our panelists this week thank you very much mark for joining us for your very insightful questions challenges and suggestions the banks need to bring you in um, thank you very much kevin foreman country sme specialist from jmmb um, Dr. Vinet Notis, Assistant Vice President Adjudication and Training at First Global Bank, and Kasia Johnson Vaughan. Kasia has even given you her email, Senior Manager, Manager SME Professional Partnerships for North and Central Caribbean at Scotia Bank. Tanya has asked me to shorten her title, but <laughs> she is Tanya Algro, Assistant General Manager SME Banking, Corporate Commercial and Consumer Banking Division at National Commercial Bank. So we're going titles too because we want you to understand that we've tried to bring the persons here who can answer your questions they are in a capacity to speak on behalf of their organizations so you can hold them to what they have put forward and what they've said to you is coming to us bring the information we are also reaching out to you because we want to help you to bridge the gap through this covid so join us again next week and we're looking forward to seeing you so stay safe Stay safe and know that we are Jamaicans. We have the grit and the resilience to get to the next side of this because this too shall pass. Yes. And we have to ask ourselves, how will we come out on the other side? And we have our bankers here who are saying they're willing to collaborate and partner with you as you move over to the other side of awesome. COVID. So join us again next week. Please share, comment, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.